Hi, this is Tara. Today we are studying Sutra number 12. What does it say? Abhyasa Vairagyabhyam Tat Nirodaha Abhyasa repeated practice. Vairagyabhyam by detachment. Tat Nirodaha ceases. Okay. So, how does Maharshi Vedavyasa explain this? He translates it, uh, Sri Rama Prasada translates it in uh, Maharshi Veda Vyasa's commentary as they are restrained by practice and desirelessness. Maharshi Veda Vyasa's commentary says, The stream of the mind flows towards good and towards evil. That which flows towards perfect independence, that is Kaivalya, down the plane of discriminative knowledge is named the stream of happiness. That which leads to the other path, which leads to rebirth, flows down the stream of undiscriminative ignorance is the stream of sin, Papa. Among these, these two paths, the flow of the desirables is thinned by desirelessness. The flow of discrimination is rendered visible by habituating the mind to the experience of knowledge. Hence, suppression of the mental modification is dependent on both. Sri Vachaspati Mishra's glossary explains that it's not optional. He's not saying I you can pick one one desirelessness or practice. Both are required to seize the vritti. Swami Satyananda says in this sutra Patanjali describes two methods for stopping the chitta vritti these are abhyasa and vairagya repeated practice and detachment or non-attachment now it's important to understand what is meant by vairagya non-attachment what is it freedom from it is freedom from raga and dvesha raga is attachment dvesha is aversion or attraction and repulsion. The things we want, the things we don't want. Raga is liking is, and uh, Dvesha is dislike. Freedom from both of these is Vairagya. So, Swami Satyananda says is we come across many aspirants who try to concentrate the mind first without developing Vairagya and without practicing Abhyasa. And that means they are trying to practice without conquering Raga and Dvesha. So this is why the mind cannot be concentrated. So he says it is futile to try to make the mind silent without removing the disturbing factors. Your mind is still clinging and uh, sort of has the aversion and you are trying to concentrate it. So it is swinging between these extremes. So it cannot be concentrated. So Patanjali says that these two forms are what we must master to allow the meditation to proceed well. Swami Vivekananda says that control is by practice and non-attachment and the mind to achieve this must be clear, good and rational. Why should we practice? Because every action is like a ripple on the surface of the lake. It's a metaphor he's been using. And the vibration, when the, that ripple dies out, what is left? It is samskaras, impressions. So when a large number of these impressions is left on the mind, they become a habit. And if samskaras are largely good, we become good. If they are largely bad, wicked, we become wicked. And if one, you know, has joyful samskaras, one remains joyful, etc. So the only counter, he says, to bad habits is to create a practice of good habits. And character is built by repeated habits and character can be changed by changing the habits. I also wanted to say there's a separate video I'm doing just on understanding memory samskara. So uh, do check that out. It will also be in the list of videos by tomorrow. Hopefully. BKS Iyengar. He says, 
प्रैक्टिस एंड डिटैचमेंट आर मीन्स टू स्टिल द मूवमेंट्स ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस नो दिस इज अ वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट एक्सप्लेनेशन ऑफ दिस सूत्र बिकॉज इट साउंड लाइक अ वेरी सिंपल सूत्र राइट ऑल वी हैव टू डू इज प्रैक्टिस एंड कल्टिवेट डिटैचमेंट डिटैचमेंट इज स्टॉप स्विंगिंग बिटवीन रागा एंड द्वेशा इट्स नॉट सो सिंपल ही सेज द फ्लक्चुएशन ऑफ कॉन्शियसनेस पेनफुल एंड नॉन पेनफुल डिस्क्राइब इन वन पॉइंट फाइव एंड वन पॉइंट सिक्स सूत्रा फाइव एंड सूत्रा सिक्स आर टू बी कंट्रोल थ्रू योगिक प्रैक्टिस मेंटल स्ट्रेंथ इज टू बी डिवेलप टू अटेन डिटैचमेंट एंड फ्रीडम फ्रॉम डिजायर्स स्टडी ऑफ द कॉन्शियसनेस एंड स्टिलिंग इट इज अभ्यास सो हिस इज दैट एल्सवेयर इन द सूत्रास पतंजलि यूजेस द टर्म अनुस्थान एंड अभ्यास कन्वेज द आइडिया दैट इट इज अ काइंड ऑफ अ मैकेनिकल एवरी डे प्रैक्टिस लाइक रोट लर्निंग एंड अनुस्थान इम्प्लाइज डिवोशन so he says that um you know repeated effort if it is done with a thorough understanding um of art and philosophy with oneness of mind body spirit it can never be mechanical it has to be anusthana so he says practice is the positive aspect of yoga and detachment is the negative aspect of yoga so the two balance each other like night and day like inhalation and exhalation please do read this original passage of uh, shri bikya sangar it is absolutely beautifully written the two balance each other like night and day like inhalation and exhalation and he says practice is evolution and detachment is involution practice is involved with all the eight limbs of yoga it is the march towards the discovery of the self involving yama niyama asana pranayama and the involutionary path or renunciation is concerned with pratyahara dharana dhyana and samadhi the other four so this inward journey the first four are practice the last four are detachment so he says this inward journey detaches the consciousness from external objects so patanjali's practice represents the ha or the sun aspect and renunciation is the tha or the moon aspect and thus you get hatha yoga he represents the ha rep- represents the very being the seer while tha is the reflected light of the seer representing the chitta so through hatha yoga hatha yoga these two forces are blended and then merged in the seer it is becoming one it that is the yoga to be adept in yoga yama and niyama must be carefully observed throughout the yogic sadhana some sometimes we have discussions in which uh, you know several sadhakas have said why why do we need to study all this now first just practice you can study all this later bk sangar in the sutra says yama and niyama must be carefully observed throughout the yogic sadhana this is abhyasa the discarding of thoughts and ideas that obstruct progress in sadhana is vairagya so to observe yama and niyama is practice and through that observation to discard what is obstructing is renunciation or vairagya so of the eight aspects of yoga the first four relate to practice the last four to uh renunciation vairagya but both are interlinked and very dependent on each other they are not separate worlds so he says without restraint the forces generated by practice would spin us out of control and he says at higher levels vairagya without abhyasa could lead to stagnation and inner decay so the first four are a process of building up and the last four are a process of consolidation so once our initial tamasic nature moves towards a dynamic state restraint becomes necessary of our own inner security so vairagya is a process by which a sadhaka <clears throat> learns to be free from desires and passions and to cultivate non attachment to things which hinder his pursuit of union with the soul osho he says that this cessation is brought about by persistent inner effort and non attachment 
So how can the mind seize with all its modifications is the question raised in the previous sutras and the sutra answers first abhyasa persistent inner practice second non-attachment non-attachment will create the situation and persistent practice is the technique to be used in that situation and we have to try to understand both so osho says that whatever we do we do because we have desires and these desires can only be fulfilled by doing certain things and this keeps us in that samsaric cycle. Unless the desires are dropped, the activities cannot be dropped. So, why are we not just not able to drop it? And the example he gives is, for instance, we all know that to become healthy and to lose weight and stuff like that, we have to stop eating. But we are not able to stop eating. We have the desire, but we are not able to stop the eating. Why is this? Because we have some investment in that action. We are getting something out of it. So maybe we are, you know, eating our, to soothe our emotions. He says maybe we are afraid of death. Could be so many other reasons. But we have created a habit which we cannot just uh, resolve at the surface level. We have to go inside and resolve that pattern is what Osho says. So it will persist because it is a habit. So for that change, how do we change something that has become a habit? Every day I come home from work and maybe I sit and eat chips and I drink a Coke, let's say. So I know I want to lose weight, I'm willing to do the things, I go exercise also maybe, but I'm not able to stop this. Why? Because it's a habit. How do we change an existing pattern? Is by creating better patterns. So let's say before I go to work, I keep some healthy snacks for myself and a nice, uh, you know, green tea. And I come back and I have changed the pattern. And if I repeat that change pattern often enough, it will replace the existing underlying bad pattern. So he says the deepest pattern of the mind is desire. You are whatever you are because you desire. And what Patanjali is saying is first drop the desire. The first thing is non-attachment. Drop the desire, don't be attached. And then you do abhyasa and you retrain the mind. So non-attachment doesn't mean that you stop enjoying, you don't stop living your life. It is that you live it without this attachment. He's, Osho says if you don't desire anything, you're basically a corpse. If you can't love, if you can't show emotion. So he says you can do all this, just don't be attached. Preference is okay, preference is good. Attachment is, Osho says, a disease. Barbara Stola Miller says cessation of the turnings of thought come through practice and dispassion. And Patanjali turns to how the vrittis can be stilled in the sutra, uh, not just in the sutra, from sutra 12 to 40. They, he describes the many paths to that one single goal. That is, how do we now seize the vrittis now that we have understood what they are? All of them form uh, some sort of practice leading to dispassion. And yogic practice is the link between the ordinary self and the ultimate freedom of spirit. So that is the gap that we are trying to bridge. In Patanjali's philosophy, we are not dependent on any external agency to grant us this freedom. It is achieved over time through our own efforts and through discipline. So practitioners may progress slowly or quickly and may achieve different degrees of detachment or dispassion. And these differences he discusses in the subsequent chap uh, aphorisms, sutras. And she says a recognition, however tentative, that the spirit is different from the material nature, is detached from the material nature, makes the practitioner disinterested in material things, even those which seem desirable or good. And this detachment, however slight, from material desire is an important step towards spiritual freedom. It culminates in Patanjali's higher dispassion, a complete detachment from the world of experience in which we cease to identify ourselves with the material world. Slightly different from what Osho uh, interprets it as, because he says it's possible to live in this world. Barbara Stoller Miller says no, because our ultimate goal and Patanjali's ultimate goal is to lead us to come complete dispassion and complete detachment from the material world. I hope you enjoyed Sutra 12. It's very, very insightful. Uh, I also encourage you to go and read the original books and chapters. Uh, if you read along, it might be a little helpful. Also, do leave any questions and comments and come back tomorrow for Sutra 13.